Welcome to Toffee TV. It is my three talking points. Manchester United 2, Everton nil at Old Trafford today. Everton uh, beaten with two penalties uh, from United. Bruno Fernandes and Marcus Rashford penalties. Two first half penalties. Settling the game. Another it's been a bit groundhog day. 11 games without a win now. It is, it is feeling like groundhog day. Having loads of shots is great. Can't score means absolutely nothing. Everton finished with a worse XG than United, so even the shot count doesn't really count for anything. United with 2.48, I think, or something like that. 2.58 for their XG, and Everton's just about 1.4. So, you know, we can't even win the XG today and claim that as some kind of victory. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the form. 11 games without a win is... Absolutely appalling. Uh, it's a, a thirty years since we had, we we had a run like this, and it's it's worrying. It's worrying. And listen, there might be some people who aren't worried at all. There might be other people who are who are resigned. So the fact that it looks like we're we're you know slipping um, further and further into trouble, it looks as though there's another. You could be facing another point deduction. And therefore, that will put us in massive trouble. And I just, I, I don't know how the, I, I'm just not sure how a manager can kickstart this. Maybe this break is good because it, it, it'll give them a chance to, to stop losing games and, and reset. But, you know, we've conceded five goals in the last two games, haven't been relatively sound defensively in the last two weeks. And, both of those games, we have more shots than the opposition, and we've we've scored one goal across the two games, and we've we had twenty three shots a day. I think we had similar against West Ham last week, and we've got one goal to show for it. And the quality of the chances aren't brilliant either. And we've said that there's no patterns of play. And how do you break out of a run where you're? It just feels like you can't. You know, you don't know how to win. I know the manager was asked that the other day. What he said that time is Burnley manager. Everton have forgotten how to win. Well, yes, Sean, I'm, I'm, we're doing it under your watch. So what was a dig at that time of Frank Lampard? There's got to be a dig at you because you have to sort this out. This can't go on. You know, two very tough away games to come next. This is getting all too close to comfort. There was always, when we were in the mix, there was always the thing of, oh, we'll get points back and... and That'll be the Kickstarter, but we've had the points. And like I said on the other video, I'm recording this as Palace and Luton have just kicked off. If if Luton were to get an away win today, then we'd be two. There'd be two points in it. They'd still have a game in hand, and there'd still be a possible points deduction to come. And we've got to play them at their place. It's not boding well. So somehow this run has got to be breaking ASAP. I know that's captain obvious, but. I just, I've never, you know, I can't remember anything like it because I think this is longer than what it was 30 years ago now. So I don't, you know, we need to hurry up and get this win and I'm not sure how they go about it, which will lead me on to the second point. And my second point is, is it maybe time for a change of formation? Because at the moment, I've just been saying in the last one, it's, it's stretched to 11 games now without a win, which is, again, absolutely diabolical. We can't score goals. We simply can't score goals. You know, Manchester, we've had 23. For anyone who's going, we've had 23 shots today. Manchester United, there's only Sheffield United who have allowed more shots on their goal than Manchester United this season. And so having 23 shots is, is neither here nor there. You're all giving up that many attempts. West Ham had 20 odd the other week. At Old Trafford, Fulham had. 1920 like when they went there it's what happens at Old Trafford it's what United do it's not like we're you know the average is 8 and 9 shots and we're blitzing it by having 23 and 24 it's what man you do but it doesn't matter even if we are because we can't put the ball in the net we can't win games we can't score goals now other managers have paid the price for much less than the record Sean Dyche is on. Now, I'm not sat here going, right, he's got to go. I'm sat here saying things have to change quickly. They have to, and this is why there may be a formational change. Now, it might lead to 
having very similar players that we've got now. But it's a, if that's the case, then let's get more bodies into the box then. Because I think if it was me now, I think I would be looking at ways to try and play Calvert-Lewin with Beto. And maybe going to a 3-5-2 and having... That way you could have Dwight McNeil or Jack Harrison at left wing back. The right would have to be Patterson or Seamus Coleman. Because our wingers aren't doing anything anyway. So take them out, get another body alongside Dominic Calvert-Lewin, another striker. And then your midfield three could be the Corey, James Garner, Amadou Onana. But you'd have three centre-backs and we could push our wing-backs high up the pitch and get into those areas because... Like I say, the wide players aren't doing much anyway. The full-backs don't, aren't really getting past. You know, when they get into those areas, Ben Godfrey in particular's decision-making is, is, is terrible. Um, he could play. Maybe Michalenko's a third centre-back. Or he could have Godfrey on the other side as the third centre-back. And maybe Michal plays left-wing-back. Or he's, he takes him out the side for a little bit if he wanted to play Dwight McNeil. I just think now... Because we're on such a long, barren run, it might be the time to try to mix something else up. I know the manager is, is of that thinking of, well, the law of averages will swing this back. We keep doing things, we, we've got more chance of it happening. But he's been trotting that line since early October. Um, and it isn't swinging back right now. There's 11 games. So I won I just wonder, I mean, I don't know what you think. Is it time to change something we're doing? As in the formation, should we try a three at the back? Certainly at Goodison. I'm not a don't get me wrong, I'm not a huge, huge lover of three at the back, but I just think too often the centre forward's isolated. Our full backs don't go on the outside and don't do overloads and don't cut things back from the byline. Whereas if we've got two strikers working in tandem and we've got the core eight breaking from the midfield three as well, and then we can get wide and get balls into the box, but we're still not exposed because we've got three three defenders and your defensive midfield player. Maybe maybe it's worth having a go that way because something's got to change. It's not working. It's absolutely not working. And what's that thing? Keep doing the same thing. Um, over and over again and expecting different results is a, is a sign of madness and that's exactly how it feels watching Everton right now. It feels like there's madness is setting. Uh, the third and final thing I want to talk about is how much we... It, no, sorry. is The third and final thing I want to discuss was going to talk about that missing address of gay and we do, but can't really do anything with that. But right now, and hopefully we'll be back soon, but right now, if we add two up front, so just tagging on to that, is it time to start giving Yusuf Chimiti more game time? Now, we still raw, don't get me wrong. It's not like I'm not going down that thing. You're going, he will be amazing, just play him and all that. And the manager and the, you know, the coaching staff see the player every single day. But I just wonder, is it time to start using him for longer periods? Like, he come on today in the 88th minute. Like, what's he really supposed to do in three or four minutes? It's not giving him... Premier League experience. He's on the pitch, but really, what's he going to do? And I just wonder if they went to a 3 5 2 and then had those two strikers, whether we could start giving Chimiti 15 and 20 minutes and seeing whether he can link up with either Dominic Alder Lewin or with Beto and try and bring him on that way. Who knows? You know, we might get a couple of chances and take them. Evan, God knows we need someone that's going to be able to take chances. So I just wondered. Is it that? Is it now the time in these in these desperate circumstances where you are kind of looking for a, a hero, as I, I guess, that we start giving Yusuf Chimiti more game time and seeing if he can affect something? Because everything we're trying right now is not working. Um, I think it's time for a new approach. And maybe having that, the three at the back, like I've just talked about, would give us a little bit of freedom to try the two strikers up there and then that gives us an opportunity to get Chimiti on the pitch a little bit more and maybe bring on his development. But it also gives the other striker a partner when his other his other player's gone off. I'm just wondering where we are with that. Um like I say, I've not I've not seen loads from him that I would be sat here going, he deserves to start. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying, should we be using them a little bit more than what we are? And listen, maybe sometimes it's Lewis Dobbin 
alongside a better or a dom, but I just wonder is it time to get Chimiti involved as well because we need some freshness, some kind of spark from somewhere. So who knows? Who knows? I definitely think they should bring him attacking coach in though. That's just me. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and try to enjoy the rest of your weekend. See you later.